This animation is just straight up amazing. Oh, wrong, wrong animation. I actually meant uh, this animation with the dragon, and seeing Stark just outright manhandle this dragon in this entire sequence, it's just, it's gorgeous. Like, it legitimately is... Free Ran really just surprises me. It does. To minor little sequences, to action sequences like this, it is just, it's such a beautiful, beautiful show. And I have seen increasingly, ever since the first episode came out a few weeks back, that there's just been a lot of hype, and the community has definitely been growing at an exponential rate. I am legit curious on just how many cells the manga is going to have in a few weeks from now, or a few months from now. Like, you know, how much is the anime going to boost it? Because I want to bet you, a lot of people that have watched this episode or are continuously watching this series... It's probably like, man, I kind of kind of want to read the manga because the series is really good. But I'm going to be honest with you. I love the manga. The manga is excellent. But the anime, I will say, is definitely elevated the source material. Like, at this point in time, I would recommend anyone that is anime only do stay as an anime only because the anime is just so good. This is such a good anime. And in terms of adapting the source material, Studio Madhouse really has just come in swinging. And I made a video talking about this yesterday and how there was an announcement that, you know, Free Ren is going to be, you know, 28 episodes consecutively and it's going to be two cores with no breaks. That's, that's legitimately insane. Like, it is an insane feat that we just, we don't see nowadays. And when you take a look at just this animation sequence alone, it's like, can they really, like... Can they keep doing this? Like, is it really possible for them to keep up this level of quality for basically 20 plus weeks? Is that even feasible? Because, like, this is just an outright gorgeous scene. The animator that did this, they went hard. Like, they went very hard for this segment and just props to them because this... I did not expect this to be as good as it was. I mean, Free Rain has tried its best to kind of not use as much CGI as possible, but, like, I honestly expected maybe some elements for this dragon fight to be kind of cheap. Or not cheap, but, like, they would not go like this. Like, to have the whole camera panning around the dragon as Stark is running around trying to bring this dragon down, and the movement of the dragon's limbs as it's dragging itself on the ground, it, it's just like, holy crap, they didn't need to do this. Like, the scale of the fight, it just, it's insane. It's like, holy crap, this man is fighting a legendary dragon by himself. Can he actually do it? And it's just a very impressive feat of art and animation for this sequence that also elevates the story and Stark as a character, and also not undermine the challenge that a dragon actually is and let's talk about that okay dragons and fantasy go hand in hand when you think of fantasy in the core essence of fantasy the things that everybody think about when it comes to that is dragons elves dwarfs orcs stuff like that magic and dragons in terms of feats and strength in a lot of fantasy sometimes there's outliners but most fantasy dragons are like the pinnacle of the strength besides maybe a demon king or something they are the absolute pinnacle of like a, a fantasy creature they're super powerful super intelligent and obviously there is different tiers of dragons like you have red dragons bronze dragons you know ice dragons you know there's different type of dragons there's even undead dragons and all that so there's always tiers to them but dragons are always a incredibly, like, incredibly scary monster to face. And, like, you have multiple fantasy stories when they have to face a dragon. The title of a dragon slayer is a very powerful title. It is a title that is not just given to a random person. It is someone that is able to physically defeat a dragon that is capable of unleashing potential magic, not just fire breath or ice breath, poison breath, whatever, but just magic in general, because some dragons in fantasy are able to just cast magic and do crazy stuff, and then once again have the intelligence to even speak with you. And to bring something like that down, the title of a dragon slayer is not something so small. So I really just love how this episode, like, like you know, it, it, it lets you see that this dragon isn't a joke. It is not a weak monster. Even though he was taken down by Stark, 
in, you know, this episode, the dragon is clearly powerful. We get to see the feats. It's a monster of raw strength and all that, and my goodness, I absolutely just love the way the dragon looks in this episode. Like, it just, it looks so good, and the fact that it is not CGI is just outright mind-blowing. I love it. I love this so much, and also, it's a proper dragon, too. Can we take a moment to appreciate that? Because there's too many times when we, uh, you know, watch anime or it's in literature, manga, whatever, a dragon is technically being depicted as a wyvern. Like, you know, you have a wyvern that is, you know, the front legs, or technically it's wings, and it doesn't have four legs. The FYI, I, I know it's kind of nerdy to say, but I'm, I'm a big fan of, like, you know, just fantasy in general. But uh, an actual dragon is literally this. Four legs with wings on the back. And when someone says, like, a wyvern is a dragon, I just can't help but roll my eyes. Because a wyvern is its two front legs are literally like bat wings, so to speak. So it's like, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm very, very happy that we actually had a dragon depiction as well. It just, it's nice. There's nice little fantasy things here and there. But I also really, really love just the dwarf companion of Freerun. Like, it, it really is a good segment, too. And I kind of want to talk about that. Basically... We kind of find out, like, some of his motivation and how he's very different than the normal depiction of strong warriors. He talks about how he's scared, fear, etc. And, you know, technically he was instilling his disciple Stark with the exact same thing. Is that, like, you know, it's good to have fear. It's good to feel scared of something because it grounds you, but also it allows you to know what you're facing. It's important. It's a very good thing to have. And not having that could be very disastrous. And so I really like just how we had that element to the character, which also kind of goes in with Stark's character, and how he's like, you know, I'm scared as well. He shakes the exact same way. It's a very beautiful moment just to showcase that, you know, it's a new generation of a warrior, and that, you know, the dwarf passed down, you know, his techniques, etc. But also, in some degree, maybe this, you know, kid Stark will even be able to surpass the dwarf in the future. And I think, you know, Freerun as well learned a very valuable a lesson from this like she learned like the you know the ability of passing on your knowledge etc to someone else because technically she's raising fern to a degree you know she is you know kind of like a disciple an apprentice so to speak and so when you think about it free Ren is teaching her at her own pace as well and it's kind of like she's doing the exact same thing that the dwarf did so it's just it's really nice there's a lot going on here with this episode and free Ren as a character learning and you know appreciating people around her a lot more now um one thing i do want to talk about which is very subtle, it's this scene, which is just outright funny, so Fern looks down, okay, and then she's like, it's so small, and a lot of people, if you don't really know what happened here, let's explain, basically, there was a magic that they got, and, you know, you know, Free Rand actually compensated, sorry, my body's not more interesting, the reason why she says that is because what Fern is reading in that book is a magic spell for x-ray vision, she's able to see through everything, obviously, it, it, it's self-explanatory. So basically, when she looks at, you know, Stark, and she says, small, I think we all know what she meant by that. Obviously, the camera does pan to kind of imply what's going on here, but, like, canonly, Fern just said that Stark has small. My poor man. My poor man got destroyed. Oh, that's not good, man. My man's ego got absolutely annihilated. But, um, anyways, besides that, we got this city here that they're journeying in. The guards are very strict. You know, uh, Free Ren talks about how it's a good thing. And it even talks about, like, you know, why they can't fly over the walls, etc. Because, obviously, there's a magic barrier. There's nice little world building here and there throughout this episode that just gives that more immersive fan fantasy tone and vibe that, you know, as I've talked about, Free Ren is just really good with. It does a really good job with its very immersive vibe, and it's why I said that it reminded me a lot of Mushoku Tensei. I know people get apparently very upset when those comparisons are made for whatever reason, but it's like, no one's gonna tell me that Mushoku Tensei isn't immersive. The fantasy tone and all that is very immersive. Like, the anime, the way it is depicted in the anime is super immersive with the color palette and the music. And Free Run has a very similar vibe to it. It really is the core essence of what fantasy is. And this episode really does present that. It's just such a good episode. But, um... Overall, I just, I really just like the little gags, the jokes, etc. I especially love this scene where Freerun's like, we gotta play tag with the dragon, and you see Fern just holding the 
the tree. It's just such a cute little moment. I love it. It's so funny. I mean, even after, like, the dragon is defeated, etc., there is a beautiful little moment here, actually, I want to showcase, that just made me kind of laugh here. Let's see here. So as, like, you know, they're finally defeated it, um, they walk up to get treasure, you have Free Rain get, like, all excited, like, she's like, yippee, like, she runs all happy, like, you can see, that's so cute, and she's just trying to get, you know, treasure, it's, I don't know, I, I, I love this episode, there is a lot of little things here and there that really just make it so enjoyable, and leave me with a smile on my face, and it teaches a lot of life lessons as well, I don't know, I just, I love it, I also like getting to see, you know, Fern say she, pretty much has PTSD, like, she's scared of, you know, Free Red, you know, staying in a location for too long, I, I just, I love that, but, uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on episode six, I can't believe we're already technically six episodes deep in the Free Red Beyond Journey's End, but that's how it is when they release the first four episodes in one day, but, um, okay, I love you guys, you have a wonderful day or not wherever you live, if you enjoyed this video, do leave me a like, it does help me out a lot, and I would greatly appreciate it, be safe, stay healthy, chibi out.